how we got interested in the short term rental business was really just actually wanting a place for ourselves to go vacation. And um, the idea is, well, if you can have a place that you would like to go visit anyway, and most of the year it's rented out and someone covers your costs and you might even make money, wouldn't that be nice, right? Because for us, we notice as a family, we're always traveling with the grandparents because you obviously <laughs> need the extra set of hands. But um, when we do that, like, how do you do hotel room? Um, so most naturally, you would big, book a big house. And that's kind of how we started looking, okay, if we have this need, someone else has this need too. So when I was kind of figuring out whether I want to do short term rentals, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, which was really helpful. And one of the topics that keeps coming up was dynamic pricing and that you shouldn't set a set rate for, you know, every day, which makes a lot of sense. And so I kind of dug a little bit deeper into the different softwares available. And I think um, of all the, the options out there, I think Price Labs made the most sense. I think price wise, it is very reasonable for what it offers. On the day to day, I definitely rely on the dynamic pricing tool because uh, we are both full time workers. We're super busy. We aren't necessarily like full time in this short term rental game. We like it. We enjoy it. But we also want to automate things to keep it as simple as possible so that the effort that we do spend on it are things we're good at, like improving the design, improving the experience for families just like us. Um, and so that's kind of how the software comes in handy for us. Uh, Price Labs Market Dashboard was actually how we kind of started gauging what area even makes sense. Um, we can see on Zillow how much a house would cost, right? But how much would that house actually make? And does it make sense? Plug it into the calculator. And I, I thought it was actually really helpful. Like one market dashboard, it's a very upfront pricing. I really appreciate that you pay your $10 and you get to see all that data for the month. And there were many markets that we just looked into and just did not pursue because it didn't make sense. Housing prices were cr crazy, as you probably already know from a couple of years ago. Um, and so that was a very effective, low cost, quick way to just gauge each market and see where to go next. So it, it was really helpful in determining uh, what are the other competitors in the area, how many days they're hosting, what kind of photos they have, what amenities do they offer and really find that match. And from that data, I was able to really narrow down what the projections like. That level of granularity helped me narrow down the my actual comparables. Um, I went into the market dashboard, narrowed it down to like the number of bedrooms, and then kind of looked through similar listings to the point of like, if I was a family that's booking because that's my target audience, what other houses are actual reasonable choices? As an example, market dashboard information told me that there is a huge jump from a three bedroom house to a four bedroom house uh, in terms of revenue, a jump so big that is disproportionate to how much the uh, cost of the house would increase if you were to buy a four bedroom house versus a three. Um, and so information like that helped me narrow down what I should be looking for uh, as I'm purchasing this house. So I would definitely recommend someone start even before they have a house uh, in mind as they're starting their research process, this should be something that they do right away. I've tried like, for example, AirDNA, where you like type in the address and it gives like a wild number, like it's not accurate. And I think that some of that stuff, it might look really easy for a beginner to be like, oh, I just type in my address and I'll find out how much it costs. But there's a little bit more to that. And as I tested out the dashboard, I definitely fell in love. I was like, well, this is enough information. I think every market is just so different. And I mean, I've only had the two for the comparison, but for example, locally, everyone has like very flexible cancellation policy and that doesn't seem to hurt the business as much. Um, so it was very helpful to see on the market dashboard how the layout or how, what's the word, 
how the spread of cancellation policies are. And on average, from, for this kind of cancellation policy, what their revenue is looking like, what their average daily rate is looking like, is that comparable to me? And that helps me make informed decisions if I were to stay like within the median of, of what's available out there. Um, it was very helpful, for example, locally to know that flexible cancellation policy is the norm. And following that norm, I was really able to quickly rebook if someone cancels. Um, and so that tells me more of the, about the local pattern of people's booking behaviors. Uh, whereas in the beach house where everyone books really far in advance, it's a family vacation, uh, more so that way versus locally, it's more for medical appointments. People come in for interviews at the Mayo Clinic. And um, it's just a different crowd that would plan ahead for a big group. And I was, I think my instinct was to do as strict as possible because, you know, at a certain point you lose out on the number of bookings people have already looked and already booked a place. Um, and so using the market dashboards to again, figure out what the norm is in the area, like what would, I obviously don't want to be too strict where it sets me apart as like a, a barrier to someone wanting to book the house. However, I want to do as strict as possible to protect the revenue that I have coming in. Um, so, so that's how I use the market dashboard that way. It has been really helpful in terms of ensuring a certain amount of revenue As we continued on um, in in our hosting journey, there was all this talk about housing prices are going down, the market is saturated. So that was definitely something on my mind, if that is true, and if so, like how bad is it? Uh, so that's where I went into Market Dashboard to take a look at how many listings are there even out there. And that's kind of when I learned, man, the number of listings have gone up by 20% in just a couple of months that I've started hosting which is considerable uh, competition added in the area. And it was a, I was also able to use market dashboards to fine tune exactly, okay, these additional listings, are they comparable to mine or are they irrelevant? Do I actually need to worry about this? Um, market dashboards also help me figure out the demand side of the equation, whether there are actually still guest booking. And it was reassuring to find out, for example, in my market, there's actually more and more demand. It's just that supply has outpaced that demand. And so that helped me in deciding, um, all right, should I be changing my base prices? Uh, what is the median right now in the market? How has that changed over time? Uh, it was still a little too soon to figure out how has everyone's annual revenue changed because it's only been a couple months at that time. Um, but that would be on my plan to review again in April, kind of at the anniversary mark to see how does this data set compare to what I saw when we just started out and how does what does that mean for me? Is that does that mean I need to lower my pricing or um, what are some considerations that I need to take into account? Obviously my own listing performance is more informative of that, but it's good to keep up with what's happening in the market and what our competition's doing. I think the dashboard itself is pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to click around and play and where there is an abbreviation or something that isn't intuitive to a regular person, there is usually a little like hover message that explains what it is. So for the most part, I think someone can get started without really attending like an hour long webinar to figure out what it, to even do with it. Um, once you play around with it, if there are questions, it's pretty easy to reach out to someone to figure that out too. Uh, so I would recommend if someone is starting new, just play around and see what you like, what information you're getting. And if you're not getting what you need, I think that would be a good time to ask someone for help.